talking about using continuous integration technologies with GitHub, specifically Travis CI and integrating that with a repository. All right, so what is continuous integration? It's a development philosophy that rather than merging your code together whenever you reach milestones, you should be continuously integrating features as you work on them. This alleviates concerns that would normally arise from integration hell where you have a bunch of features coming in at different times based on different code bases. So all of your developers are working on the same files essentially. Uh, to prevent bugs, uh, continuous integration relies on a lot of automated steps. We use unit tests and automated build processes in order to confirm that the new code that we're bringing in actually works with the system and does what we want to. Uh, because of this, uh, continuous integration is best suited for a test-driven or behavior-driven environment. So uh, how do we do this? Uh, we could run these tests on our development systems, but this comes with a number of drawbacks. First of all, our developers would have to remember that they need to build and run every test every time they want to push up to our repository. We want to avoid that if possible so that people don't end up forgetting. Uh, second, our development environments may have some sort of state on them that uh, would affect the build process. We may have uh, environment variables that would mess things up. We may have state that carried over from a previous build that might cause problems. We want to make our build independent of the system that it is built on. And the third problem is that any time that we spend building code is time that is not spent developing. While languages like JavaScript that are non-compiled don't have as long to build these programs, it's still, we could be doing a lot more product, uh, productively than having all of our developers sitting around waiting for code to compile. Uh, so because of these, we use a CI build server that can create fresh operating system installations whenever we want to do a build and set them up with the configurations that we need. Uh, so this brings us to Travis. Travis is, surprise, a continuous integration build server. Uh, I like it because it's built to communicate with GitHub. Uh, you can set it up to build for every push and pull request that comes in for your repository, and it's super easy to set up. I'm going to take an existing repository and set it up so that uh, Travis will build it whenever we receive a pull request. Uh, and it'll run all our tests and make sure our code is nice and neat. So I'm going to uh, pull up this repository here just to show you that this is just a small little FSG repo that I have set up. And I'm also going to pull up my live demo notes. Uh, okay, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set this up with Travis and actually turn it on so that Travis is going to start working with it. We go to the Travis website, which is just travis-ci.org, and uh, I have some repositories here already because I'm signed up, uh, so I'm just going to click this little plus sign next to my repositories. And that's going to bring up this long list of everything that I have worked on. Uh, and here's the repository I want to turn on right here, so I will click this button. And now it's enabled. Uh, so now whenever we push to that repository, Travis will try to build it. But it doesn't know exactly what we're building yet. We have to tell it what we want. So I am going to open up my console here. And I am going to be doing, uh, first I'm going to check my git branch. Oops, guess I have to git init. That's not right. Um, do, do, do. Got to just do that real quick. OK, and now just confirm. OK. Oops, looks like I'm in the wrong folder. That's the problem. Uh, I'll take care of that later. So now I'm going to go into the actual folder. There we go. And take a look at the git log just to make sure. Yep, OK. So I'm going to first start by creating a new branch that I'm going to be doing this all on. So git check out Travis. And now we're on a new branch. I'm going to uh, do vim.travis.yaml. And this is going to be the instruction file where we're going to tell Travis what to do. So the first thing we have to do is we have to specify the language that we want, which is going to be node.js. And then the second step of that process is we have to specify what versions of Node we want it to uh, build on. So we do Node.js, and then a colon, and then we put in a dash, and we say stable. And this will accept any keyword that NVM, your Node version manager, would accept. Uh, so that might be IOJS, it might be a version like 0 0.10, 
uh, or it could be stable or node in order to represent the most recent version. Uh, okay, so now we have it set up so that uh, Travis will be able to build, but that's not particularly useful for us because we also want to make sure that Travis is going to check that our code is correct. So we have to also tell it uh, that we want to run an additional step when it's built. Uh, normally there are three steps to the build process, which is install, build, and deploy. And anything that we put under this script tag here is going to be run during the build step. So I am going to have it run a gulp task called Travis. And we are going to set that up right now. So I'm going to save this. And now I will go into my gulp file. And you can see that it has a lot of inclusions right here. I am going to scroll down to my tasks and insert a new one. So gulp.task, and we will call it Travis. And this is going to have dependencies on the build and the test server JS tasks. So it will execute those first. And then another thing that uh, I have to do uh, are test server JS. Uh, it normally will keep some listeners open, uh, so it won't terminate immediately when it's done. I want to make sure that this exits without any errors if it completes all these steps. So I'm going to add a process.exit in here in order to ensure that I'm getting a uh, error-free completion. And then I'm going to save this. Now we can do git status and see that these exist, so I will git add them. Confirm that. And I will do git commit added Travis stuff. Then we can git push origin Travis. OK, and it set up a new branch. OK, now we're going to go over to our repository here. And we can see that my Travis branch has popped up. So I'm going to do a pull request. OK, and I will create this. It's working. OK. Now we have where normally it would just say that it has no conflicts with the base branch. We have this uh, yellow circle, and it says that some checks haven't completed yet. That means that Travis is executing its uh, build and push uh, checks. So if we look at the details for this pull request right here, then it brings us over to the Travis website. And once it loads up, we can see that it is actually executing a build of our uh, data. So it has, it is currently npm installing, and it's going through my dependencies. Uh, while we wait for this to build, I am going to go into the settings for this real quick, because there is one thing that we want to change, and that's that I'm going to turn off build pushes. Uh, you can set it to build on pushes. You can set it to build on pull requests. I like to just have it on pull requests, because I don't like to test my push code. Uh, and now I'm going to go back to the current build and see if it's moved along any further. Ah, that is unfortunate. Uh, OK. So that's moving right along. But there's one thing that we've forgotten in our, uh, in our build step, which is we want, to include our, um, we want to include our database. We have to set up a database and tell uh, Travis that it wants to use that. So I'm going to open up our Travis.yaml file again. And I am going to insert uh, somewhere uh, services. And I'm going to ask for MongoDB. And this is going to tell it that it needs to start a Mongo server. Uh, so then I will. So now, when I push that back up to the Travis, it will uh, initialize a Mongo server and not run into issues trying to do that. And then there's one more thing that I'm going to hopefully really quickly do before the end of this presentation, which is I am going to show you how to set up different environments. So let's say we want to also build on. Uh, env for node, env equals development. So we have one environment, which is our development environment. And then we have another environment, which is going to be equal to our production environment. And then we can set multiple keys by separating them with semicolons. So I'm going to do session secret here. Uh, just like that. And now I'm going to save it, git add dot, uh, git commit. And then push origin Travis. 
now this will write here. Uh, we can see that our earlier build failed because we did not have our uh, module running earlier. And so now this new test is uh, getting pushed up and Travis will automatically start running a new pull request for the commit that it has received. Okay. So just as a quick review, you enable your repository on Travis.com, you add a YAML file that lists the steps of your build process, uh, you push your YAML file to your GitHub repo, and you can bask in the glory of continuous integration. Any questions? Yeah? So when you activate that repo on Travis CI, does it automatically put a webhook in that repo, or does GitHub just know because you have a .yaml file to do the continuous your own access? Um, I believe that GitHub, uh, it, GitHub sends a message to Travis's webhook. Travis has a webhook on their end that listens for messages from that repository. So when it receives a message from GitHub indicating that a new uh, pull request or push has been made to that repo, then it executes the build. It will build for both environments. So if I look, yes, separately. So if I look at this new build that has started um, and scroll down, we can see that it has two separate build jobs where before it just had a big log. Okay. Any other questions? All right, thank you.